Hey, Taylor here from UX Tools. If you've gone anywhere near social media or a news outlet or even another human designer, you're probably already aware Adobe bought Figma. You might be wondering what that means for you or for your work. In the short term, probably nothing. But someday, eventually, you might need another tool other than Figma. And when that day comes, you can come back to this video and know that we've got you covered. The truth is that you actually have a lot more options than you might think. It's almost like we at UX Tools have been planning for this day. For six years, we've been tracking and studying the differences between various design tools. If you're seriously looking to switch, I would recommend checking out the design tools database. You can find it at uxtools.co slash tools. We do our best to keep the database updated, but we also rely on input from the community. If you notice a missing tool or a feature that's not correct, send us an update and let us know what to change. Every year, we also survey thousands of designers to see how the industry is changing and see what tools people are using. That's a great place to check out as well if you're looking for other tools. Now, I would recommend that you ask yourself what you're looking for in a tool. If you're looking for an exact clone of Figma, you're not going to find it. Figma is kind of like this UI design, graphic design hybrid tool. It can make UI, it can prototype, but it's also great for like icon design and illustration. That makes it pretty unique. So think about what you need in a tool. Auto layout, dynamic inputs, custom fonts. Remember that Figma brought live collaboration to the world of UI design, and it's not easy to find an exact replacement for that. Even just a few years ago, designers were having to jump between UI design tools and prototyping tools to create what they wanted. For example, jumping out of Sketch into something like Envision or Principle. Those days are gone, as you'll start to notice that many of the tools that we'll cover today have prototyping built right in from the start. Also, I'm intentionally not mentioning Adobe tools like Adobe XD or Illustrator because that seems kind of redundant given the acquisition. Okay, with all that in mind, let's jump in. First up is Sketch. Sketch was kind of the tool that started the latest design tools movement. It broke the industry open, so many people, myself included, no longer needed a full Creative Cloud subscription to get their work done. It has a few important differences from Figma. It's Mac only, and it does not have a free plan. If you're moving from Figma to Sketch, you don't really have to worry about learning new patterns and keyboard shortcuts or things like that, because Figma copied those almost exactly when they first started. One of the first things you'll notice is that Sketch's smart layout isn't quite as polished as Figma's auto layout. It's missing some important features, like the ability to rearrange components within a stack. But you can still do a lot here. Collaboration in Sketch is a little bit trickier. It does have live collaboration, but since it's Mac only, it has to go through the Mac app. An important step forward for Sketch is being able to view your designs in the web browser. While it's nice to view the canvas this way, you can't fully inspect it without clicking on a page, which will feel a little foreign coming from Figma. In reality, Sketch is still a great option and deserves a lot of respect for what it's done for the industry. It's definitely worth thinking about for your team. Next up is Framer. Framer keeps reinventing itself with each new wave of design tools. First, it was a code sandbox, then it was a React component library, now it's a website publishing tool. The latest version is kind of like a mix between Figma and Webflow. This makes it able to do some pretty crazy stuff in terms of motion and prototyping. It's priced pretty competitively, and it does have a free tier, which is always nice to see. It's very easy to get up and going in Framer if you're used to Figma. It does have live collaboration, if that's something you're looking for, and since it's actually just creating a website under the hood, everything is viewable through the browser. Framer continues to innovate and put out compelling products. If you don't like how Framer currently works, just wait a year or two and they'll probably completely reimagine it. It's definitely worth a look. Next, we'll take a look at Axure. Axure is somewhat of an industry veteran. It launched in 2003 and has been a longtime staple of the UX community. It can feel somewhat expensive comparatively. It's about 25 US dollars per license, and it does have a 30-day free trial like Sketch. It doesn't use a canvas and artboard setup like you might be used to. Instead, it functions page by page. So if you're someone who likes to be messy and explore, this is a little bit different to navigate. Axure is more of a UX tool than any of the others on this list. It's built for extensive documentation and prototyping. It's not as polished as the smart motion prototypes you might be used to, but it trades polish for power, including things like dynamic inputs, logic, and variables. It can also generate links to web prototypes, which are fully interactive. Axure is worth taking a look if you need a tool that's going to stick around and you're looking to take your prototypes to the next level. Now for one you may not have heard of, Antitype. If you haven't heard of it, you should know about it. It's capable of building pretty wild stuff without code. It's also really cheap. 
It has a free plan, which can take you pretty far, and is only $4.99 US dollars. It's sort of like Sketch, Axure, and Webflow had a baby. It's Mac only, and it has a whole bunch of prototyping capabilities. When I use the web viewer on my prototype, I can see that it's generating code underneath. Not really clean semantic code, but it's definitely code. It has auto layout and it acts more like CSS than most tools with things like margins and padding. It is missing some important features you should know about like a pin tool or the ability to create icons. If that's not something you need to do, this is definitely worth taking a look at. Next up is PinPot. PinPot is free and open source. Open source means they're completely in control of their roadmap and don't have to pay as much attention to competitors and trends. It's also completely browser-based, just like Figma. It's missing some big features that you might want, like auto layout. However, they are working on it, and one of the beauties of open source is that they don't have to hide their progress. Everything is in the open. Something cool about this approach is that companies can run their own instance of PinPot on their own servers. This means that it's completely secure and private and that the company owns everything. It also means you'll never get the dreaded Figma 404, assuming that your own company's servers are always up and running. Otherwise, it feels pretty similar. Prototypes can be viewed and shared over the web. PinPot is a really exciting alternative, and I'm excited to see where the team takes it. Now for some honorable mentions. First up, Affinity Designer. Affinity has built this really amazing suite of tools competing with Adobe. They have Affinity Designer, that's a replacement for Illustrator. They have Affinity Photo, that's a replacement for Photoshop. They also have Affinity Publisher, which is a competitor for InDesign. Affinity Designer is their vector-based tool that can be used to create UI designs similar to the way you would use Illustrator to do that. It also has a feature complete iPad companion, which is pretty unheard of in terms of tools like this. One of the best things about Affinity tools is that you only have to pay for them once and they're usually pretty affordable. There's no subscription attached. And if that's something you're interested in, might be worth taking a look. Next up, Envision Studio. This tool had a lot of hype when it was first being developed, but that has faded in recent years. If you look at Envision's current marketing, they've pivoted to whiteboarding and communication tools. For that reason, I don't really recommend investing too heavily here if you're in it for the long run, but it did have some pretty neat features when it first launched. We also have UX Pin. UX Pin has evolved several times as well, kind of like Framer. It originally started out as a prototyping tool. In addition to just UI design, they're doing some really cool stuff where you can link components from Storybook, a Git repository, or an NPM library. This is a really cool way to start designing UI with real components. You'll have to check it out to see if this would work for your team or your design system. Either way, it's worth taking a look. Another one is Marvel. Marvel got their start as a prototyping tool that could import sketch designs. Now it can do design, prototyping, and handoff all on the same tool. It actually even starts off by asking you if you want to import from Figma or Sketch. The Marvel editor isn't quite as capable as Figma, but you could still get pretty far in a pinch. Flinto is another one to keep an eye on. It's very similar to Sketch. It's native Mac OS, and it has really great iOS prototyping capabilities, like the ability to use haptic feedback. If that's something you need, that's worth a look. Last up is Quant UX. It's sort of like if Figma was built for usability testing. It has a bunch of user testing and analytics tools built in to drive user studies. Honestly, I would love to see something like that come to Figma or some of these other UI design tools. Are there other tools I didn't mention here? No, there are not. Of course there are. And we as designers should invite this competition. The next time you see a young tool just getting started, make sure to give it a try and see what it's all about. The truth is that all eyes are on the design industry right now because Figma was just acquired for 20 billion US dollars. So let's keep the industry moving and evolving so we keep getting better and better tools. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.